He over, oh. over oh, oh my god. god. And he, hit, he, hit, he hit somebody. What's good, everybody? Welcome back to Real Fan Sports. My name is Zach. I'm here with my partner, Nonfiction. And What's up, y'all? Today, we're going to be checking out what is Bathurst. Or, or better yet, okay. this is Bathurst. So I don't know okay. a whole lot about this. i just been told that we need to check it out. Basically, what I've yeah. gotten from the little bit I know is that Bathurst is a city inside New South Wales, Australia. It's one of the biggest <coughs> racing events in Australia. And from all the hype, it feels like it might also be one of the bigger racing events in the world. Okay. So this seems interesting. The video is called Tim Motorsports. There's nothing like it. This is Mount Panam Panorama. This is Bathurst. So let's go ahead and check it out. Okay. Let's check it out. Do you like racing on before we get started? Do you like racing? Do you watch or watch NASCAR or anything like that? I watch it off and on. I'm not like I don't just sit down and wait sit for there and watch, to start. watch and do yeah. circles. Yeah, I'm I'm kinda I, I'm kinda the same way. I, I, like you know, I told I you, like, I, I feel usually, like I watched Dale Earnhardt a little bit, and then once he passed away, that was kind of like the it for me. Yeah, I, I've watched you know players or not players, but drivers when once they are somebody from my area. So when Jeff Gordon was coming up and he was doing his thing, he's from the Bay Area. So he represented the Bay Area. Then I started watching, but then you know, I don't watch all the time. You know what I'm saying? So, but I've yeah, watched I the it's... off the. The regular NASCAR, I've watched the one where they go in between like the desert and all that stuff. I don't know what it's called, mm -hmm. but I've watched yeah. it on ESPN. So I've seen, I've watched them every once in a while. Well, let's see if this, this you know, ruffles our feathers a little bit and is going to bring us some energy because I've heard this is great. Okay, let's get it. Well, epicness with the music start. I, I like it, bro. It's getting me in the mood. Mount Panorama. Whoever shot this first off. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, he's drawing the track. Oh, I love that. You know so what? it looks like they got like a little straightaway. You never a couple little snake turns. Like it. This is Mount Panorama. This is Bathurst. As soon as you head out on this mountain, it is total commitment for every single millimeter. If you can't make the judgment call 120 meters into a thousand kilometers to just be a little bit sensible, don't start the race. The super uh, thank you. Mm. <laughs> the charge to turn one. Hell quarter. Corner, second gear, the engine's right in its sweet spot. But remember, whilst you've got to carry mid corner speed and use that exit curb, you want to get to 100% throttle early, so don't get too greedy. Yeah, corner because probably a lot of collisions right there. As you say that, of course, that's what we're seeing. <laughs> <laughs> it's a deathly corner, and, it, and it's right out the jump, too. It's right yeah. out the jump. That first turn comes immediately after you go through the finish line. I mean, yeah. it looked like they had probably like 20 cars lined up at, at least. That's what, and they're all trying to make that same turn right there. Sharp. <laughs> Moment is six hours later. I love how he explains the gear that they're in and everything too for people that are new to racing. Yeah. Every single time you exit the pit lane, you grab your belts and you tighten them. Every other lap you think of it, you tighten them again. And after a pit stop, whether they've changed the brake pads or not, tattoo it under your eyelids. Pump the brake pedal. Because if they put the pads in and you forget, fuel on the road, you're a goner. Mm. Wow. Mm. Yeah, Griffin's been right. It's one of the toughest on the circuit. If you Ooh. don't get this one right, psychologically, you're gone for the rest of the lap. Take the big hurry up. 260 on the way in, remember, and you've got to knock off 130 k's an hour. But you've got to do that on the 260, and you got to get down to 130. 
Two sixty hit that corner. You got to get down to one thirty. This this is my thing. It's like like I've watched some NASCAR. Never followed yeah. followed it heavy. Never you know like understood all the ins and outs. So, you know I know you go fast. You slow down the current the corners. Once you get at a certain point in the corner, you can start you know hitting the pedal now. But those those yeah. turns are wide. I mean those are quarter mile turns almost that they you know not that long. But you know they they're hitting those corners wide. This you're having to go from two sixty to one thirty. You're having to cut off half your speed in an instant. While worried about people trying to overtake you, while worrying about people trying to hit you in the back or someone in front of you, you got to worry about their speed too and keep up to where you're not bumping yourself out of place or them out of place. I mean, we, we talk about how sports in general take special people to do. Now, when it comes to driving, that really takes special people because not anybody can just get behind the wheel and do what they do. And I don't care wh- where you're racing, what part of the world you're racing, that takes a special type of person, almost a person that's on the branch of insanity because how fast they go, um, just the trying to edge themselves in these small little gaps that feel like it's smaller than the car, the speed at which they're going, any hesitation, that could be your life. It could be the person next to your life. It could be, you know, your car could flip it to the crowd. It could be anybody. But that takes a special type of crazy to do that. And it's well, not like, you know, is, static, but just a special type of skill. Well, the thing is, like, like too, on top of that is the fact that you have to turn a half a second, a second long gap and make it feel like 10 seconds in your mind of processing. Mm-hmm. You have to process every single moment and every single output of wh- what you're coming up to, what speed you need to be at, what gear you need to be in, noticing your surroundings all within a second. You're moving 260 miles per hour. I mean, I like to think that I used to drive pretty fast. I try to slow myself down now. You know, I'm not trying to get speeding tickets. But, like, <laughs> even when you're moving, if you're driving a car and you've ever hit 100 miles per hour and you move that wheel slightly, it's a big adjustment. Oh, so yeah. when you're so when you're talking about something like this and going three times that speed and having to make a yeah. sharp left, yeah. the amount of strength that it has to take to be able to take that wheel and move it that way, the amount of of, of breathing exercise they go through several different types of breathing treatment and stuff like that to prepare their bodies for that type of intensity and speed. Oh yeah, because anything like NASCAR, deeper. NASCAR they they lose weight in a race because of all the fluid that they're sweating from anxiety and just on gp because the car is hot on the inside you know what i'm saying so i don't know how hot it is during this race i don't know how uncomfortable it is because you it's one of those things where you have to be comfortable in being uncomfortable yeah you know what i'm saying and and they're not just going in circles i mean we're just seeing a portion of this and it's already kind of like oh wow they've gotten two (laughs) turns and they've already said you could die at both of these turns is basically what's what's been said basically the first two yeah. When you're challenging for Griffin's Ben, either make the commitment or get the hell out of it. Yes, sir. We're approaching the yeah. county. If I can't tell you anything simpler than this, there is one racing line up there. Oh! Make sure you're on the tram tracks. <laughs> there is Fire. no room to put your front right tire even a foot outside of where it needs to be. Gosh. Oh, the track is jammed. Oh, look at Carl. Everybody looks like that. When we come Where up to thing? Reed Park, you Love need wall. to hug the wall. Put the car right over there, hard on the wall, but be careful. Don't overuse the curb on the inside. It'll feed you into the wall. Mm. So you want to mm. almost lift the wall. You want to turn your car to where you're this almost lifting the wall with the your back tire. Where we go from going up the hill and we transform to going down the hills. Oh, and man, I need to think about the uphill, downhill, and how much different that is bang, of, bang, of bang, driving bang, your vehicle. Bang. So we're out of Reed Park, and now we're going to head down to that damn grate, right? It's a horrible, <laughs> I love how he says drain damn grate. Yeah. Against the wall on the right-hand oh, side yeah. of the circuit. Now, the problem here is you've got to commit really, really early. And you don't know, because nowhere in Australia does your front tyre and your car get more downward load than at the grate. You don't know way back then if your power steering is going to suffer it, or it's gonna give up and or gonna give out. Fans. Yeah, you probably spin out. I didn't even think so, about that. Yeah. Yeah, that great. Yeah, I, yeah, I can see that. I can see at that speed and trying to 
just the the like I said, the, the few little centimeters to get right right up to it, but not go over it. Because if you ain't got the right type of system going there, you're spinning out. You're spinning out a hundred percent, a hundred percent. So we've got through the great. We're now heading through Sulman to McPhillamy Park. This is Mount Panorama. This is where you need to be thinking corners ahead of where you are. You can't see the roadway up ahead, but you're going to average from the cutting all the way to skyline around 200 kilometres an hour. This ain't kids' play. Matt oh, Blake, oh, big moment. So you've got through the top of the mountain. You've done the tough. And, and like it's like it's like I've never heard about racers. And like it's because I don't watch a, lot, a whole lot of F one. I know F one's like like this too. But yeah. the fact that you have to do film work on before you go and do this race, you got to go oh, and yeah. do yeah. simulation runs and stuff like that because you can't see the road that's coming up ahead of you. You have to know the road. You have to know every. Yeah. Square feeling. inch of the road yeah. and and feel it. Yes. Yeah. It's about feeling. The feeling is the most important thing. Now, in this is before you were born, but like in the nineties, the nineties racing was big. I mean, it's still big now, but I mean, as far as in movies, so there was a lot more movies dealing with uh, motorcycle races, uh, mo you know, motorbikes, but also cars, and that's one thing every version of racing movie that ever came out it always talked about the feeling even fast and furious even though we, we just talked about it yeah. they talk about it's the feeling how you feel the road you have to trust your instincts if you don't go rely on your instincts you're, you're not going to finish the race so uh, yeah I, I hear i understand what he's saying yeah driver stuff now throw that bit away you're gonna be a ballerina that's the view from yeah. skylines <laughs> Yeah. Oh, I say you're gonna, gonna spin. Need to dance all the way down Ooh. through the S's. The descent starts. Do they have to you can slightly drift too we'll much, and it's right. And it's going yeah, downhill really too. Cool. It makes yeah. it yeah. harder to, to adjust. You can't get the throttle on, can you? With two wheels in the air, get the thing back on the deck. And the moment your rear tire hits the ground, in, in, in like the way he's making it sound, is that it's not a matter of if. You end up on two tires. It's that you are it's, going to end up on two happen. tires. Yeah. And you got to get that thing back on the ground. You got to touch all yeah. four. Yeah, because you, you, you need the wheels to get that traction. If you don't, you, you're going to cause an accident. Yeah. Is the same moment your right foot hits the firewall. Boom. Now weave through the concrete walls, but we don't got get too clever and try to get an inch away from them. There's nothing to be gained by doing that. Oof. Yeah, over, oh, over oh, oh my god. Overcorrected. Oh my god. And he, hit, he, hit, he hit somebody. Forest elbow. This is Damn. the second time and the only other time in the lap that you're not going to feel your front tide. You're going to come over the little crest there. Downhill, like you're not and a ton and a half, she won't want to pull up. <laughs> so Damn. this is where you need to be really measured, slow it up, because your big drama here is going to be understeer. The car does not want to turn there. They're tagging, they're tagging. For goodness sake, be aware of what's going on around you. If there's one gap you can leave open for your competitors, it's right there. Think about this. So they're saying, like, like there's a strategy to coming in there. You can yeah. leave that gap, and that's fine because it's so simple to make a mistake. Leave yourself yeah. a little bit yes. of space to where you don't get yourself messed up or them. And if they get messed up, then you can take the lead afterwards. Yeah, yeah, because like that that he said, allowing them to take that that space right there to try and overtake your 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 inside lane, it's too dangerous. And there's, I know from. Just watching over the years, yes, there how many people I wonder how many people have actually attempted to do that in this race and have failed over and over and over trying to be that one. Just if I can just get right in on this lane, but it's like, don't don't do it. Don't do it. Be Not smart. Working. Don't do it. You need to either position yourself out right, commit yourself to Conrod straight and your top speed, or you're gonna need to defend, because that is one of the great spots. And find your position. When you come that straightaway, it's how little, and, and that's the thing I think that straightaway is so important with, 
because it's how little damage you've done to your car throughout this process to where you can change that gap if you've done no damage because your car yeah. is now running still full cycle full cylinder all speeds ahead you can close in you straight line speed so if you're going to defend you defend you block him you pull him up so you get your foot to the gas and that's first. when it's a battle that's when you yeah. take risk this is get as fast as it gets 300 kilometers an hour 300 kilometers now i don't care what cars you've that's when the driver skill really kicks where in you've driven them. there is nowhere else that you're going to go where a ton and a half of race car at 300 kilometers an hour oh my actually God. feels like a ton and a half of race car at 300 kilometers an hour. <laughs> he says no place they're going to go where it actually feels like that. <laughs> in Australian motorsport, the chase. Oh my gosh. You want a tough bit of roadway? That's it. You want to talk about commitment? This is it. You come down here and you'll see there's a meter of tarmac that's been laid down on the left hand side of that for you to use every single millimetre of it. If for mm. one lap, you do not go out there and use that. Wow. It's an almighty crash. You're going to compromise your lap time and compromise your result. So you need to use that every lap. And why do you need to do that? You need to get the car around there. At 300 kilometres an hour, do not lift your right foot off the throttle until the car is squared up and when it is and only then you put your foot on the brake and you push it so damn hard that you want to bend the brake pedal. He goes, he's into the side of right here. The drift. Yeah. You see the tires wanting to move. It's almost coming off the axle. It's trying so hard. Yeah. It's the physics of it. It's hard to fight physics, man. Ooh. Oh, great reaction. God, how did great you get out of that? With the great reaction. Oh, six yeah. kilometers of the 6.213 kilometer circuit done. Do not get it wrong here. This kid is going to win this thing today. Finish the job right now. Will Davidson might get this done. Nothing in it. He and you see at the end how he was kind of edging to the left? He was playing yeah. defense, keep so behind him. Like, no, I'm winning this. You're not no, taking I'm winning this. I'm winning this. I don't want to play with me. Yeah. Everyone wants to win it. That's crazy. That's cool. You can't first beat the mountain. Jeez. Look at all those notes on one race. Win this race. That's one race. And when he when he said 300 kilo, uh, kilometers per hour, that's 186 miles an hour. For us, that's 186 miles an hour. I think the fastest that I've ever been in a car is 120. So I've never yeah, been. Yeah, I'm about I'm about around I'm about around the same too. Um, <laughs> First off, I want to start it off. I want to first first statement after watching this video. I want to start just like this. I don't know how these dudes that get in these vehicles and drive races like this are able to walk on their own. And I say <laughs> that because their balls have got to weigh <laughs> so much for them to be able to get in that car and do that after watching the amount of accidents and doing all this type of training and it doesn't matter how much training you do because it doesn't even matter if you make a mistake it's how anyone makes a mistake and that's over mm -hmm. it it it's 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 kind of like we talked about in, in a in a stream we we're talking about the NFL where they compared the mindset of Joe Burrow how his heart rate doesn't elevate during big situations and that if he wasn't such a great football player that he has the same characteristics of a serial killer. Well, if he's a serial oh, yeah. killer, then what are these people? I don't even think they're serial killers. I think they're just having fun mass murderers because like you're insane. <laughs> they, there's no way in hell like I don't even know if I'd want to be in the car. You driving it alone, I feel like I'd be nervous. And I'm not driving it. Like, having a professional drive it, I feel like I'd be nervous. I'd still do it because I'm an adrenaline junkie, but I'd be scared. I mean, the Gs you feel, three, 186 miles an hour? Yeah, you, you feel some heavy physics on your body. Heavy physics. And the, the turns are hitting all of those, at those different lanes. And like I said, just a little bitty inches or centimeters of where a mistake can happen. And whoever the gentleman is who does the overall voiceover and explains the full track, I don't know if that's somebody they picked specially or he's part of, he's part of racing history, but mm -hmm. that guy he was perfect for this video. Absolutely, absolutely. Perfect. 
Absolutely. <laughs> and he, he makes you understand how serious this race really is. And not like, oh, it's because it's, it's this, this. No, because of how dangerous it really is. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, you know dude, one, one thing that is, is probably one of, I think, the worst arguments. And it's like, I don't know why this has become like super popular over the last 10 years of mm-hmm. people trying to say, oh, like certain sports aren't sports. There's no ball or there's no this. Yeah. And, and like people are like, oh, you know, you, you know, I know this is very different from NASCAR. Like I know we, we you know, guys that are watching in that are coming yeah. from, uh, you know, Australia, New South Wales and stuff like that. We keep going back to NASCAR. We go back to that because that's what we know and that's what we've seen. This is something that's new. So yeah. we're trying to make comparisons that aren't realistic but it's just trying to connect the dots but there are people that say oh these nascar drivers and stuff they aren't they aren't athletes this isn't a real sport they're just driving cars the intense amount of training both mental physical reaction all this stuff that is what makes an athlete it's a skill it's reaction time it's strength you know Mm -hmm. it's it's mental strength like that is like the definition of what an athlete is. Like if you don't believe I mean, that their bodies that go through physical are doing changes this? in a race, they go through physical changes in a race. Yeah, exactly. It's it's absolutely insane. It's absolutely insane. And this was crazy. I'm so happy that uh, I can't remember who uh, who recommended this one to us. I know it was in during one of our live streams uh, for the State of Origin uh, Game Two matchup. So really, truly appreciate you recommending this. This was phenomenal. I would love to watch a little bit more of this, man. Like maybe yeah. we can find some more videos. I don't like think this. It was, this was I don't cool. think uh, Nate was the one that referred it, but I think once we talked about it, he did talk about it and say we should react to it. I do remember yeah. that. So, but I'm actually. I, like I said, I've seen NASCAR, I've seen rally sports, I've seen um, uh, just different different cross country rally sports, and mm-hmm. it's one that used to be used to be. I don't know if they still do it, but Cannonball Run. I don't know if that that became it became. Oh a, yeah, I forgot about Cannonball a, Run. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I remember that, that, yeah. that became a movie series. You know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. I remember that. I don't know if they still do that. I, I, you know, that one was that one was illegal in all types of ways. Oh yeah, all types of ways. Yeah, for sure, for sure. <laughs> but it was always it made great movies. <laughs> Yeah, true, <laughs> but, um, true, true. This was this was actually really really cool to see, and I I would love to watch more of this. I would love to watch yeah. more. So, of this. if y'all got any, you know, I don't know if you call them highlights or any other stories that explains different races or different moments in this sport, hey, you know, in at this track, mm-hmm. uh, please drop us some uh, drop us some links. I'd love to check out some more. Or if y'all know some other tracks that have a deep history and things like that, some similar to this that you like us to watch, please drop those links this was really cool i appreciate it you know we love to bring variety to this channel we love learning new sports this has kind of been um you know this experience of running this channel real fan sports has opened our eyes to so many different sports and that is what's made this you know not just special but like more interesting like i get excited when we get things like this that are new that we've never heard of or you know never knew anything about and get to actually learn the history and how intense it is this was phenomenal um, thank you all for that. I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you all did, please hit that like button if you're still here. Hit that subscribe button as well. If you're new to the channel, we'll be bringing lots and lots more of content, live streams, shorts, edited content like this, as well as some other things that we're going to keep secret for now. So please stay tuned. Uh, appreciate you all. Nine, you got anything else to say? Appreciate you. Love you. We'll catch you next one. Peace out. Cheers.